Welcome to Vizzy. With Vizzy, users can effortlessly create captivating music visualizers that perfectly match the mood and energy of their tracks. The platform offers a wide variety of customizable templates, allowing you to choose from various visual styles, colors, and effects. These visualizers sync seamlessly with your music, reacting in real time to every beat, bass drop, and melody. With Vizzy, you can experiment with different styles, preview your visuals as you go, and export them in high quality, ready to be shared on platforms like YouTube, Instagram, or your personal website. It's a perfect tool for anyone wanting to make their music videos more engaging and eye-catching. Now that you know a bit about Vizzy, let's dive into a basic tutorial on how to create your very own music visualizer. When you first visit the Vizzy homepage, you'll notice five main buttons at the top. Creations, Editor, FAQ, Open Source, and Donate. For now, we'll click on Creations. Creations consists of a gallery of visualizers made by other users. It's a great place to explore for inspiration or to see what's possible with Vizzy. As you can see, there are quite a lot of projects created and published by users. For now, we'll sort them by staff picks. These projects are pre-made and carefully curated by Vizzy staff. If you'd like, you can go ahead and click on any one of these to use it as your template. However, the main objective of this tutorial is to create your own project, so we won't be using a pre-made template. Now, we'll click on Editor at the top to start creating our own project. Once inside the editor, you'll be greeted with a mini creations window, showcasing pre-made projects created by other users and featured project creators. You'll also have the option to sort them by most liked, most recent, most clicked, and staff picks. Click anywhere outside the window to close it. Now that the creations window is closed, let's take a look at the main window of the editor, starting with the ribbon at the top. The ribbon consists of several menus that give you quick access to essential tools and options. File. This menu includes options that are pretty self-explanatory. Edit contains options that are also self-explanatory. Project. Here, you'll find options like explore creations, publish to community, screenshot thumbnail, and set a custom resolution for your project. View. This menu provides more advanced options such as the command palette, change editor layout, and toggle window dragging. Help. The help menu includes a variety of support-related options, such as joining Vizzy's Discord server, the FAQ, the option to launch intro tutorial, and tools for exporting logs or viewing the change log. Now, below the ribbon is the left bar, which contains different sections for building and customizing your visualizer. You'll find options like composition, analyzers, effects, automations, media, projects, and lyrics. The Composition tab is the area where you'll arrange your layers and their items. The Analyzers tab is where you add analyzers to analyze the audio. It processes the audio to gather data like frequencies, which can then be used in other sections of your project. The Effects tab shows you all the effects you've used in your project. The Automations tab shows you all the automations you've made for every item and effect. 
The Media tab is where you upload and manage all your audio and image files for the project. It also includes a stock option, allowing you to access and use stock images in your project. The Projects tab lets you save, organize, and open your projects, helping you keep everything in order. The Lyrics tab allows you to add and sync lyrics with the music, making it easy to time their appearance. Now that you know the basics, let's begin creating your own music visualizer. We'll start by deleting all the objects in the composition so we have a blank canvas to work on. Now we'll add a new layer. Since this layer is empty, we'll add a new item. This is the Add Item window. For now, we'll select the image item. This will be used as the background of our visualizer. Now we need to add an image. We can drag and drop an image from our files, but for now, we'll use the stock option from the media tab. The image has now been inserted into the project. We can also upload an image from our offline storage or use an image link. Another cool feature Visi has is the auto background option. With this enabled, you can drag and drop an image straight onto the preview window to apply it. This image looks good, so we'll use it. The image item has more options to choose from and enable. Among them is the mirror option, which can mirror the left and right half, the left center and right center half, or the whole image. We'll select the right half. This looks good enough for the background. We'll now go back to the Composition tab and rename the layer to Background. Renaming layers is essential for staying organized and avoiding confusion as your project grows more complex. Now we'll add a new layer. Remember, any items added to this new layer will always be visible over the layer under it. For this new layer, we'll add some particles. The particles item offers various appearance options to choose from. And you can even upload your own custom image to use as a particle. You can also change the color of the particles. For now, we'll leave it at white. As you can see, the particle appearance I chose isn't visible enough because they are small. To fix this, I'll increase the amount and the maximum size. I'll also increase the minimum size so the smaller particles are more visible. In the Behavior section of the Particles item, you can adjust other parameters such as the audio impact and the reaction speed. I'll adjust these just a bit so that they're more responsive to the audio. As you can see, this is the track that's being used for this project. 
You can click on the Choose Audio button to use your own music. Once again, I'm renaming the layers to stay organized. Here comes the fun part, the visualizer. For this, we need to add a new layer. Then we'll add the spectrum item. The spectrum item has many cool presets to choose from. For now, we'll go with this one. Now, we could wrap things up here, but the visualizer seems incomplete. So, we'll move on to more advanced features like adding effects and automations. To start this off, we'll rename the spectrum layer to keep things organized. Next, we'll add the camera shake effect to the spectrum. The camera shake has now been applied to the spectrum, but it looks odd since it's shaking all over the place. To fix this, we'll automate the shake to the audio impact so that the spectrum shakes to the beat. We'll do this by first setting the amplitudes X and Y and the rotation of the camera shake to zero. We'll set the frequency to something around two. We'll also disable auto scale. To add an automation, we'll click on the three dots next to the controller we want to automate and click add automation. We'll set this automation to audio impact and set the max value to four. Now, we'll go back and do the same for amplitude Y. Since we want the max values of both the amplitudes to be the same, we'll just select the same automation we made earlier. This is already looking good so far, but the background seems too static. We'll now go back to the Composition tab and add an effect to the background layer. We'll add the Flicker effect. The color of the background seems to have changed. We don't want that for now, so we'll set all the color options of the Flicker effect to zero. We'll also set the brightness amplitude to zero and then add an automation. Once again, we'll be automating the brightness amplitude to audio impact so that the background flickers on the beat. We'll set the max value to 1.5. We'll also adjust the frequency of the brightness a bit. Now, we'll add the camera shake effect to the background. We don't want the background moving all over the place, so we'll apply the same camera shake settings from the spectrum so that the background also shakes to the beat. For the background, we'll leave the Auto Scale option enabled. We'll be automating both the amplitudes of the camera shake to audio impact.
Our visualizer is complete, so let's move on to the final step, exporting the video. To do this, we'll go to File and then click Export. This is the export page. In the export settings, you'll find various options including resolution. You can choose from default resolutions like 720p, 1080p, or even 4K. You can set the start time and end time depending on the length of the video you want encoded. It defaults to the full duration of the audio. Note that if you have a video item in your project, you won't be able to set these. In the advanced settings, there are more options, such as setting the profile, selecting a preset, setting the encoding mode, and setting a bitrate. Remember, higher bitrates require more disk space, and faster presets require higher bitrates to maintain the quality of the video. If the estimated file size exceeds 2 GB, you can enable the file system option so you can export the video with a file size of up to 4 GB. Once you click Export, the encoding process will begin, and once the encoding is finished, the video file will be downloaded to your device. That's it for this tutorial. We hope you've learned how to create your own music visualizer with Visi. Don't forget to check out other Visi tutorials as well. We're excited to see what you'll create next. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.